immediately. So here's what the corn looks like shortly after emergence. Uh, the early growth stage uh, is when it's sending down roots. Uh, normally, uh, if you receive dry weather then, uh, most farmers think that's not a bad deal because it sends the roots deeper. And then if you... Uh, uh, root develop. These were the crop conditions in Illinois as of uh, already uh, 1934. I'm going to turn it over to Rick Crone, and he's going to tell you a little bit about his farm. As this group is assembled here, uh, Mr. President, we feel this is a cross-section of, uh, not necessarily this area, but as a whole of the Midwest, uh, the corn and soybean belt, uh, even some of your southern regions. We, we feel we've got some of the, uh, basically, uh, they've come here at all as a one to try to work something out for this situation that uh, we haven't got ourselves into. We're going to try to work with as best we can. And on behalf of this group, I know they're glad to be here. We'd like to welcome you here to our farm and to be going. situation is so low, and I know you and Governor Thompson, too, has had the uh, Great Lakes plan, uh, has talked about it, where you would drain the Great Lakes. Uh, we're no experts here. Other people can tell us more about than that. But we've got rivers here that's going to affect your coal industry, your farming industry, and, uh, and lead on. Mr. President, Secretary Lane, distinguished members of the congressional delegation from Illinois and Iowa. We appreciate your coming in the president here to Southern Illinois. You are the first sitting president ever come to Southern Illinois, not campaigning. So we appreciate that. You've chosen well. I just inspected the corn and soybean crops of Herman Crone's farm and before that, we came in surveying the area by helicopter. And the situation on the ground, I'm sorry to say, is as bad as I expected. Secretary Ling has been giving me regular briefings on the drought conditions in each state and the farm crisis that it's caused. But I wanted to see it for myself. And I thank all of you for showing it to me. What I saw was not a pretty sight. Marker in the cornfield back there showing how tall the corn should be. And that was getting up around eight feet. And instead, it sort of came up to about here with the top tip of any one of the leaves on, on me. I know this farm and other areas of the country were blessed with rain this week and we're grateful for it. It was enough to wet the surface and turn the dust into mud. And it may have helped by some time, but it hasn't solved the problem. America desperately needs more rain. Now, we can't make it rain, but we could help to ease the pain. And that's what the federal government will do. Currently, 1,973 counties in 38 states are eligible for federal emergency agricultural programs. And our administration has developed a large traffic movie. There's an old story about Mark Twain that isn't too sensational, but since it involves a rainstorm, I thought you might like to hear it. Mark Twain was leaving church one Sunday morning with a friend, and it began to pour, and his friend asked Twain, do you think it'll stop? And Twain looked up at the sky and says, well, it always has in the past. <laughs> I think we can say the same thing about the drought. Will it end? It always has in the past. But the quick goal of Colin is in this job. Now, I had been invited to address the National Farm Bureau, which is being held in Las Vegas, Nevada. And on the way there to the hall where all, everyone was assembled, one of those sharks that was there for the gambling recognized me and said, what are you doing here? And I said, well, I'm addressing the National Farm Bureau. 